Swimming is a major part of Australia's culture. Unfortunately, drowning is a leading cause of death among children under the age of five, and it can happen within seconds and without a sound. Recently we went in the backyard in our pool with all the kids. We had a good swim and then Lola asked me to go to the toilets. She wanted to take her floaties off, so we took the floaties off. And then we came back and I asked her, do you want to go back in the pool? And she told me that, no, I'm cool, I just want to stay next to you on the bench. We had someone arriving at this time and we had a bit of a chat for five minutes. Lola was sitting really close to me and she went down to the pool and went straight to the bottom of the pool. And then suddenly my husband told me, where is Lola? I just remember her staring at me at the bottom of the pool. When the patients come in, it's very hard to deal with the families. Um, they're often uh, greatly distressed because this has been a injury has occurred in a perfectly well child. Uh, they hope that we can uh, bring the child around, which we often can, but sometimes can't. I'm really surprised how the whole event was really silent. She just went to the bottom of the pool. She didn't try to swim back or do anything. The four key prevention messages for children under the age of five include supervision, pool fencing, water familiarisation and CPR. We often teach that supervision means hand contact or eye contact. It's important to be prepared when it comes to bath time. That can include taking the phone off the hook, taking the phone into the bathroom with you and also making sure that you have the towels and clothes nearby for when your child finishes. You have to be directly engaged with a child near water, you're either holding their hand or looking at them directly. Our research shows that most children were actually allowed into the pool area by a parent or carer, and it was at that point that they were left without adult supervision. It's important that all pool owners understand their responsibilities when it comes to pool fencing, and making sure it's safe and compliant with the legislation. 86% of the private swimming pools occurred among children under the age of five. The gate has to be working. The kids can't just jump on it and undo the latch and it should never be propped open. Nearly 50% of children who had a near drowning had had swimming lessons. Water familiarisation can make the child more confident when it comes to the water. However, these swimming lessons will not drown proof the child and we need to ensure that there's always supervision within arm's reach. We feel that the quick action of the parents of knowing how to do the CPR has helped the child greatly and we think converted what would have been a tragic drowning into a near drowning and the child going home. CPR is an important skill to have, not only for drowning, but any emergency that occurs. Enrolling in annual CPR classes will give you the knowledge and skills to know what to do in an emergency. And we found in some of our patients who have reported to only be in the water a minute or two, that we have changes on x-rays already, so that the water's got into the lung and caused them to become heavy. Any attempt at CPR is better than no attempt at all. Straight away, she started vomiting the water, which was kind of a relief because she was doing something at least. First reflex as a parent, you just hold them and hold them and you know cuddle them. That's what you want to do. I start crying and I couldn't believe it. It was so close, you know, because you, you don't realize. So we are the custodians of children. They grow up in an environment we create, and we have to make that environment as safe as we can. They're just exploring their environment, so really no child should drown in a backyard swimming pool.